This video is where I start to reassemble the cross slide. You'll hear me call it a few things. First thing I noticed is it was filthy underneath. There's paint residue in the ways, which really showed me nothing other than this machine hadn't been used well since being painted. And so I get the leads, not the lead screw, the cross slide screw. And first mistake I made was I took the Acme threaded nut uh, that the screw goes into and I noticed that there were two dimples, so to speak, on them. But I thought that that might be an indication it was for the rear. So they were both facing that way. That was a mistake, and you'll see in, later on in the video. So I placed it on, um, worked to try and get everything aligned. Did a lot of backwards and forwards. It got the nuts attached, then tried to put the screw in. And you'll see really nothing other than frustration happens here try to line up the front part to insert. It's a pretty tight fit at the best of times, but it didn't work. So here's what I learned, which should be invaluable. First thing that I learned is that both of the nuts, there's a slight dent and those go together. And that's something I thought of while I was doing it the first time. Other thing is they had painted over a set screw nut. The set screw wasn't there and it, the hole was just filled with crap, essentially, little metal shavings. So what I did is I went ahead, cleaned it out, and then I fully understood that by putting in the set screw there and tightening it down, it pushes the two nuts apart, which would tighten up some of the backlash. So both nuts had the end end facing each other. I start by screwing it together. I grease all of the ways and then prepare to put the piece on top. I line up the holes, I get the screws in. My advice if anyone's going to do this is don't tighten the screws all the way down. Let them be loose and run it backwards and forwards a few times. You'll see eventually I got that part down packed, but that wasn't the best part of what I was doing. So some backwards and forwards. This piece was a piece of metal that's adjusted by the side. You can see there's three almost nipple-like um, Allen screws. And so what that does is that applies sideward pressure to keep everything square and tighten or loosen up the fit. I apply grease to the nut and to the Acme thread. Sorry, not the nut, the spur gear. So there's a spur gear that runs into the apron and the apron allows it to move backwards and forwards. So I put in the two um, Allen head screws in the front, tighten down the back, and then since I didn't have a knuckle buster, it was rather difficult. I actually used the VFD and the cross feeding part of the lathe to check it out. And one great thing here that I'll mention is a VFD has an awesome feature of an amp readout, or at least mine does. And so I could see when it was having a hard time, it was binding up and the amps would go from about 4.2 to 5.8 or 6. And so that was a real good indication. And you'll see I land up loosening and tightening the nuts several times on the actual slide. And that was really one of the things I got wrong. The other thing is that piece of metal that I put in on the side, it was maybe an eighth of an inch short of where it needed to be. And when I pushed that back in, I just did that a second ago, to fit flush with the front, it worked a lot smoother. So here you can see it's working well going forwards and backwards. And then I'll use the reverse feature of the VFD to make the lathe run backwards. Pull the slide backwards and forwards since I didn't have the handle on the front. So that part worked out really well. And you'll see here, um, at some point there was something got sucked into the back of the motor. So it made a peculiar noise, that's what I was investigating. But turned it off, started back up, no issues. Here you'll see I'm manipulating the front apron has the ability to turn the cross slide forward and backwards or left and right. That's not driven by the lead screw, which is a great feature as well. I'd never seen that before, but I'm far from a machinist. So here's the compound, it was dirty. Um, you'll see I break out the brake cleaner and one more of the 40,000 paper towels I used. Clean up so I could see the numbers on the side. 
but there were also tons of metal chips, so I knocked as many of those loose as I could. The bolts are longer than the um, nuts have space to consume, so when you put the nuts on, you really have to tighten them down partially to get it to sit. So you'll see lots of wrenching. I should really get a set of wrenches downstairs. Uh, most of what I land up using are adjustable spanners, or adjustable wrenches. So turn the compound, get everything nice and tight, and then I decide to tackle cleaning or yeah, really just removing the crap from the quick change tool post. So no real rust on it, but lots of metal filings. There were about four or five holes on the top of the compound, and they just had as much um, crap packed in. I suppose it's all metal filings. So here you'll see I take the front end off. I haven't got, I never got any of the wrenches when I bought the tool. So that was something I was at a loss of. Clean up all the holes, use a screwdriver to run backwards and forwards through. Then I break out the vacuum cleaner in an effort to pull out any of those chips that I had. From there I put the quick change tool post back on. Put the nut back on, give it a quick tighten down. And then take the uh, tool holder and eventually put it back in place. So now we're pretty much in good shape. I oil it, you'll see me push down with a screwdriver, it's got a ball bearing, and the nose on the oiler doesn't fit too well. So everything was ready to go at this point, and what else would I do besides grab uh, the handle, make sure that the rack was working, that worked out really nicely. I actually couldn't have expected it to work out better than that, unless I had spent the money and bought the part. Here you'll see I'm taking a piece of scrap tubing, tightening it in the jaws, uh, I usually grab two for good measure, and I'm getting ready to start cutting. First thing I'm going to do is, you'll see I have to use this wrench because I didn't have a knuckle buster, uh, which is apparently the technical term for the piece that you slide left and right. So we move the camera to a new location and fire up the lathe. The one irritating thing is you have to grab a wrench every time you want to make a micro adjustment. The one thing I'll end up doing later is I just use the compound because it was an easier, it's a better knurled finish. So you can almost see it here that uh, the tool is a little too low. So we'll do the first attempt at cut. You can see how I'm actually not turning on the lead screw, I'm just turning on another shaft that runs the apron and I'm running across and I'm creating chips. They're not the world's prettiest thing, but it was better progress than I had made before um, because I now had the use of that handle. So what I do is I back it out, turn it off. The finish is marginal, but it's pretty decent. Uh, so I grab the uh, spanner and I tighten up the adjustment screw to pull the tool up. So it probably had to come up four or five millimeters. I'm not even gonna guess what that is in inches. And so we get it in and we fire up the lathe and here I use the compound, you can see. And I get it ready and engage it and you'll see here, these chips are coming off awesome. Since it is a cheap set of carbide um, brazed on inserts, there's no chip breaker in them naturally but for what I was doing with the material, it came out awesome. So I adjust the cross slide back and I couldn't be happier with how this worked out. This project had been a bear and it was actually